you never used the DJ Pro AI app, you chose the right video, by the end of this short video, you will know exactly what to do. The first thing that you're going to see when you open the app is this. This is what the app calls classic mode, and it's meant to emulate a real turntable on a mixer, and it does a really great job at it. If you look over here on the right, this is the most important thing to know first, and that is that your music sources. So you press this music source button, and this is where you're going to find your music sources. My collections, that just means my playlist. They call it collections. Other apps call it crates or something else. My collections is your playlist. We will go over that in a later video. Then we have music. This is music that you already have on your device. And then the next ones are going to be streaming services. I highly recommend if you're using, if you plan on using DJ Pro AI for the iPad, then sign up to the title streaming service. It's only $9.99 a month and you have unlimited songs. You don't have to worry about downloading, transferring files and all that. You could just load up songs right there. And now in 2023, most places have Wi-Fi or at least good internet service. To load up a song, you are going to go either in your streaming service or wherever you are getting your music from. For this example, I'm going to be using my collections. And we're going to load up a track. Now you go and you find the song and you just click on it. And it will put it on the deck where you click the music select button. So if you pressed it on the right, it'll go on the right deck. If you pressed it on the left, it'll go on the left deck. And now we have a song on. I just want you guys to be able to play one song and then play another, keep it going. We will do transitions in another video. Over here to the right, we have the BPM slider. BPM just means the speed of a song. BPM equals speed. You raise the BPM, the song goes faster. You lower the BPM, the song will go slower. If you're playing two songs at the same time, they need to be the exact same BPM. So it might be hard to do that with the touchscreen of the iPad if you're doing this before you get a controller. Or if you're using a small controller like this, it may be hard to get the exact BPM. So now, if you're not worried about people calling you a fake DJ, what you could do, let's say this song is 121 BPM, this song is 128. What you could do is you could try to get close but you see how it's 121.2 and I got it, but it might be hard and it might take away your time from focusing on other stuff while you're DJing. So just, you could press the sync button once and it will bring the BPM to the same one, same exact one as the other one. And then if you press sync off again, then you're not using sync. So you are a real DJ. All sync does is matches the BPM and then it plays the songs in and matches the beat to the best of its ability. It's not cheating. Don't be afraid to use it, especially when you are first starting out. Later videos, I'll show you how to do it. Manual sync buttons here. This is where our BPM is. You're not really gonna need to go into this section until you're doing advanced stuff. So don't even bother th with that BPM slider faster and slower. This little music button, what it does is if you raise the BPM a lot, it sounds like the chipmunks. If you have this little music button pressed in, it'll sound less like chipmunks. It makes it sound like the speed, like it's not sped up, and then you can match the BPMs. Now, this is supposed to be like a record deck, a real record deck that spins. You could use it to scratch. You could use it, you could tap it to slow down the song. And then also, if you want to slow down and speed up the song, there's these kind of hidden plus and minus buttons down here. So if your song is off when you're beat matching, you could raise the, you could speed it up, slow it down. This is really only for manual beat matching and we'll get into that later. So for now, you don't really need to pay attention to that. Here is the most important button and that is the play button. You press play, it starts playing. You press play again, it stops playing. Now your app may start like this in the settings it might have start playback. So to change the settings, we're gonna press the middle button. Settings, general. And if you have start playback on, 
turn it off i recommend because then it's going to start playing a track immediately and it can be kind of annoying just keep this off and then when you play the song and you pause it it stops you load up a new song and it doesn't automatically play right away having an automatically play right away is really annoying now we have these buttons down here set and then kind of looks like a skip arrow what this all this does is wherever you want to set this set button it's going to leave a temporary cue point and then every time you press this arrow button it is going to go back to where you set it and you could set this anywhere and it, it will be active and it changes every time you move it it's on, it's a button that's on basically all controllers and it is something to get used to if you're doing manual beat matching and you're trying to start the song at the right time you could kind of tap it in and get the beat going now this next button is neuromix now i'm gonna go really into detail on neuromix in later videos but very very simply all it does is if you turn this slider all the way to the right it's gonna be a vocals only like you have a vocals like you have an acapella track and then if you go all the way to the left it is going to be an instrumental track that's it that's all it does no it's not perfect it sometimes sounds like you're underwater or it sounds distorted but that's what it does you could make instant mashups to the right is vocals to the left is instruments that's all you need to know for now with neuromix it could be overwhelming now we have a crossfader all this does is if it's all the way to the right the right deck is going to play at full volume and the left deck is not going to play so you can get it ready you could do whatever you want on the left deck but it's not there's going to be no sound coming out in the middle both songs are going to be playing at the exact same volume this is it as only if you have the same bpm and you have the beats lined up do not use this crossfader when i first started djing i thought djing was moving the crossfader from left to right i thought that was djing i got into that habit and it is completely wrong the only time you use the crossfader is if you're doing scratching which this is a beginner tutorial and we're not doing scratching so how are we going to change the volumes of the songs i'm going to show you right now so up here we have a couple of options if you press the one to the left over here this brings up our mixer section this is what you're going to see in most dj controllers whether they're beginner controllers or if they're very expensive professional gear this is what you're going to see you're going to see these volume sliders so that is the same thing that that is the same thing that we have here if you want the right deck volume to be all the way down you put it down if you want to go up you go up this is how you want to get into the habit of blending songs in bringing songs in and taking it out using these sliders and not the crossfader i can't stress it enough because that's what i did for years and it sounded terrible so use the volume sliders the crossfader is for scratch all right up here we have a filter what this does is if you turn it to the right it takes out all of the low frequency the bass and if you turn it to the left, it takes out all the high frequency. In the middle, it is normal. A lot of songs, EDM, techno, electronic songs, they produce them with filters. So by having this at our fingertips, it is very useful to do very simple transitions. I'll show you in the transition tutorial video. This middle button is our waveform. This gives us a, vid a visual representation of the music. As you start practicing, as you do this more, you will get to see what color and what shape sounds like what. Very simply, if it's a small shape, if it's very thin, there's no bass. If it's bigger, then there's bass. So that's the very simple way to know what the waveforms do. We are in pro mode. We have a bigger view of our waveform. 
we have a bigger view of our library down here. If you press the mixer button here, we get back to the same thing that we had in pro mode. I mean, the same thing that we had in classic mode. This bottom section is exactly the same as if you have this open and then the jog wheels are away. But the difference is in pro mode, we get that whole section and then we get instead of record decks, we get the, these jog wheels, which do the same thing as the record decks, but they're smaller. Here we have a big view of our waveform and the bottom, everything else is the same. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you the easiest, simplest transitions so you can start mixing. So watch that video next.